Okay, so a tutorial of the command panel. Right now, all the doors and windows are shut and it's showing that the system is ready to arm. So if you go into zones, which is right here, you can see the battery life, the little green bars, and the batteries will typically last for years. But you see that this system has the front door, the sliding door, a garage door, a living room glass break, a smoke detector, and it comes with a heat sensor on our smoke detectors as well. So right now, when all the doors and windows are shut, it'll say ready to arm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this out, but I'm gonna walk to the front door and open this door. And now you will see that the front door is separated and it's saying not ready to arm because the front door is open. So it'll let you know that the front door is open. So you need to have all the doors and if you have windows covered shut and it'll say ready to arm. And now it says ready to arm. So if you are in the home and you're staying here, you're gonna arm it, arm stay. So right now I have the code set up to 1111 to make it easy, um, but you're gonna put in your code but arm stay, you put in your four digit code, which is right now 1111, and now it's arm and stay. Now it's still gonna count down the 45 seconds because it doesn't know if you're leaving and someone else is in the home. So even though you're arming at stay, it's still gonna give you time to leave because you could be going to work and your wife or someone could be here at home or vice versa. So we're gonna let it count down. Okay, so now it's saying the system is arm stay. So that means you are free to walk around the house and any of the doors that are covered, which means the front door, sliding door, or the garage door, if anyone opened that, the alarm would go off and it would give you time to disarm the system. So let's test it now. So now it's arm stay. So now we're gonna come over here and you're gonna open the door. And now what it says is you come into the house and it's saying disarm now. So it gives you about 40, 30 to 60 seconds, depending on how it's set up, to come in here and disarm the system. So now you're gonna put in, hit disarm, put in your four digit code, and now the system is disarmed. Now it's saying front door is open because I left the front door open. So now we're gonna go. So that is arm stay. Now arm away is if you have a motion detector in the home. Now the only time you're gonna be arming arm away is if no one is in the home and if, I mean, the technician would tell you if you had a large dog and it would set off the alarm, but if you have no large dogs or, you know, pets in the house that would set off a motion detector, then you would arm the system away when you're leaving. So arm away means no one is in the home and no large pets or pets that would be capable of setting off the alarm are not in the house, and then you'd arm it away. But if you don't have any motion detector, you can just get in the habit of arming stay regardless because Again, the only difference between arm away and arm stay is arm stay does not enable the motion detector and arm away enables the motion detector as well. Um, so to get to tools, if you see this little tab right here, if you hit that and put go to tools and you put in your code, this is where you can add a new user, you can change the chime, which I'll get into, you can put in your Wi-Fi settings and network, or you can reboot the system. An important aspect of using your system is being comfortable using your system. So when I follow up with a lot of people, um, I, I go over this because I just want them, you, you, you're paying for an awesome system and you, know, you wanna be comfortable using it. And people are always worried about false alarms and these systems are very smart 
and they, they put in a lot of redundancies to stop false alarm. Let's pretend uh, you know you, you arm the system uh, from the panel, not the app or the key fob. So you arm it stay. We're gonna put in our four digit code, one, 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 and it's giving you 45 seconds to leave the house. Now, we're arming it stay because we don't have any motion detectors. So let's let it count down. So now it's arm stay. So typically, Say you came into the home, what you do is you'd open the door and the alarm's just not gonna uh, blast off blaring unless you turn off enter delay, which we'll get into that. But you still have plenty of time to come here, put in your four digit code, you hit disarm, you put in your four digit code and it's disarmed. So very simple and easy. Now, if for some reason, 30 or 45 seconds something happened like you tripped and fell and you couldn't get over to the panel the alarm would start going off and you would still have around 30 to 45 seconds until ADT or it would send you a text message and give you a call and that's when you would give them your verbal password and say everything is okay so that's the uh, arming at stay the chime is a pretty cool feature which allows you when doors or windows are opened to let you either have a voice to let you know which door or window is open saying front door, or you can also have it as a little tone, little ringing noise, or you can have both. So right now this system is shut off the chime. So if we go over here and open the door, nothing will come from the panel. Now, I personally like the chime because I have young kids and I'd want to know if a door or window is open. So if, how do you turn it on and off is if you go to that little tab right here, you go to tools, you have to put in your four digit code, which is one, 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 one right now, but your four digit code is definitely, hopefully not one, 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 one. And you go to settings here. You can adjust the brightness of the screen. You can adjust the volume of the chime, which is turned off, and you can see these right now, these are off. But if we wanted, if we tapped voice chime, now, if we open this door, do you hear that? It says front door. Let me turn up the volume a little bit here. So I turned up the volume. It takes a couple of seconds to adjust that. But that's, and now, if you also wanted, not the voice, but you wanted just the little chimes, which doesn't say anything, then that's called the tone chime. So let's see how that sounds. So that's the tone. And now if you wanted both, which, I'm not sure anyone would do, but if you turn on both tone chime and that, you get the front door, it'll say front door. So you get both. So some people like that feature, I personally do. If, uh, so some people like that feature, I personally do, because it lets you know who's opening and shutting. So if someone opened a window and you had a sensor on the window, so right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it back off. So we'll turn both off. The screen shut off is, I have it set at two minutes, so it would go, the screen would go black if, so it just doesn't have the screen on the whole time. You can scroll between 10 minutes, 30, 30 minutes, off completely or 30 seconds uh, let's have it leave it on two minutes if you ever wanted to clean your screen this still has the uh the plastic on i believe oh, maybe not so if you ever wanted to clean the screen if you hit clean screen then it wouldn't allow you to hit anything and you could wipe and clean it um, so that's that's the tools and the chime also in tools is after you go here 
get the tools. One, 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 one. You're gonna put in your four digit code again. Um, you can go to advanced settings, and this is where you're able to do a system reboot, system shutdown. So if you ever needed to change the panel battery, you could hit system shutdown. So it'll temporarily shut down and you can remove the panel and replace the battery. Um, system reboot, if they ever needed, if ADT ever said, can you reboot the system for me? This is how you would go in, you go into tools, go to system reboot. Now this system, does not need internet to function. Uh, the only time you need internet is if your cameras, if you had cameras, but right now it is also connected to internet, which means um, one, the system that you're paying for is a full cellular system where it's not off your Wi-Fi. where if the Wi-Fi went out, then you know, you'd, ha you'd have no call out for help. They actually have a Verizon or an AT&T 4G LTE cell phone right in this panel. And so if a part of the service that you're paying for is that cell service. So if uh, you know the internet goes down, you still have a fully functioning system. It also has a battery backup in this panel. And a lot of technicians will have it connected to internet if you do. And so you can see the little bars there. If for some reason yours is crossed off, they just never connected it to internet because it's not needed. If for some reason you change your internet, how you'd reconnect it, is you go to tools, put in your code, go to Wi-Fi settings, you'd hit scan for network. You'd find your network, you put it in, and then you put in the password there. You hit okay, and then you hit save, and then it would reconnect, but right now it's already connected to internet. An important part of the system is a feature called entry delay and turning off entry delay. So what that means right now, when you arm stay from the panel, you'll see that entry delay is turned on. What that means is if anyone comes in through a door that's typically used as an entrance, typically it's the front door or the garage door is set up as an entry delay, that will give you time to come in and disarm the system. Now, it's typically set up or like the, the sliding back glass door or some windows, you're not typically coming in as, as an end, uh, to, to come into the house like that, if, unless you're up to no good. So those would typically be set to instant perimeter where the alarm would automatically sound off if someone opens the window or the back door if the system is armed. So what I'm gonna show you is what that means. So we're gonna do arm stay with entry delay. We're gonna put in the four digit code. So now it's arming stay. And we'll edit this out so you don't have to wait with me. So now it's arm stay with the entry delay on, which means if someone came through the front door or this garage door, because we're expecting someone to come in through those doors, the alarm would give you time to disarm the system. Um, but if someone came through the back door or some of the windows, they would typically be sent to instant perimeter because they're set to automatically go off because we're not expecting someone, we don't want to give them time to disarm the system if we're not expecting them to, to come into the house, like which would be through a window. So what I'm gonna do is show you, we're gonna open the front door and this is what entry delay is. You open the door, and now it's giving you about 40, 30 to 60 seconds, depending on how it's set up, to disarm the system. So you come in here and hit disarm, one, 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 or your code, your own personal code, again. So the reason why I wanted to go over this is when you go to sleep at night, and uh, this customer's house, is upstairs, their, their bedrooms. So right now, when you go to sleep at night and you arm the system, you don't want someone to have 45 seconds if they came through the front door or the garage door. You don't want that entry delay on. So that's what entry delay turning it off means. 
So if we go to arm stay here and you turn off entry delay, now when you go, and you're gonna do that when you go to sleep at night, because again, you don't want people to have time to audit like 45 seconds. You wanna be woken up and notified. You want the alarm going off. So if you shut off entry delay, so again, it's right here. You turn off entry delay. Now we're gonna arm the system and I'm gonna give you an example of what happens. So now it's arming. And now when anyone opens the front door or the garage door, it's gonna be the same like if they opened a window or uh, the back door. Now you'll need to um, verify that because most of the technicians typically would change all those windows and back doors to instant perimeter, but sometimes it, they, they set it up as all entry delay. So I would fool around and, you know, and test that yourself just to, and if they're not, then you can call in and ask the, for those windows and the back doors to be set as instant perimeter because you typically don't want someone having 45 seconds to come in and disarm the system. Well, they're not gonna be able to disarm, but you know what I mean. So now it's saying arm stay instant. So now shutting off entry delay, pretending this is nighttime. Now, as soon as we open this door, the alarm is gonna sound. So now the alarm sounds. Whoever has the app would be notified. And now you're sort of gonna wake up. You're gonna know what's going on. Now you still have around 30 to 60 seconds to disarm the system. And now it's disarmed. Now here's another part that I wanted to add is you'll see that I disarmed the system, but the system's not saying ready to arm. So you actually have to disarm the system twice. The first time we just disarmed it is we stopped the signal from going to ADT. We said, we're good. Now we have to clear it to be able to rearm the system. We're saying it's, so we're gonna put in the code again. And now it's back to normal. So whenever you have a false alarm, you have to put in your code once to stop the signal, the alarm going off, and then you're gonna put in your code again to have it ready to arm. So that's the benefit of turning off the entry delay. Again, you want to do that when you go to sleep at night because you want to be alerted instead of just having someone have a countdown because I don't know if I would wake up to just a countdown. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't. I want everyone to be very comfortable using the security system that they're paying for. And so uh, a lot of times when I follow up with some customers, they still feel uncomfortable about using the system because they're worried about false alarms. So this system is very intuitive and uh, it, it makes it very hard to have you know false alarms. So I'm gonna show you, we're gonna arm the system, I'm gonna show you how hard it is and then what happens if like for some reason you don't get to the panel in time, which you do have plenty of time. So we're gonna arm it stay. Say you're leaving um, and you don't have any motion detectors. Um, you're gonna arm the system, one, 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 or put in your code. We're gonna let it arm and then you'd be leaving to go wherever you're gonna go. So you'd open the door and you'd leave. Now we're gonna mimic when you get home. And typically you'd be able to just disarm the system from your app for the convenience factor or a key fob, but for some reason, say you didn't have any of that and you're just used to uh, using the panel. So we're waiting for it to count down. Okay, so entry delay was still on. And if you didn't learn about that, you can watch the, um, the little video I had about what entry delay is and why, when would you turn it off and, and on. But right now, entry delay is on. So, you're coming into your home, you don't have your app or key fob, and you're gonna open the door. And it's gonna count down, and it's gonna give you between 30 to 60 seconds, depending on what the technician set it up as, to come over here and disarm your system. So you don't have to worry, you don't have to freak out and you know, run over here, you have plenty of time. But let's 
pretend you have groceries and you just forget and you just don't make it over here in time. So we're just gonna watch what happens so you feel comfortable using your system. Now the alarm's going off. So you have 45 seconds, around 30 to 45 seconds. ADT is sending you a text message. Now you put in your code and you're good. The police are not coming. Uh, no call from ADT because you disarmed the system in time. So even if you didn't put in your code right now, then you'd get a call from ADT and ADT would say, hey, your alarm is going off and you'd have to give them your verbal password and you say, oh, it's, it's a false alarm, I'm sorry. Or if you really needed help, they would send help. But this is, I just, I just want you to be comfortable using the system because the police aren't coming really unless you need them to, or if you're away and like, and someone's breaking in, then, then they're showing up. But the false alarm factor is very, very low. So now we come in here and we disarm the system and we put in one more time to clear the code. To change the user code, uh, you'll go to tools or to add a new user, you're going to go to the tools page, which is a little mark right here. You go to tools, you put in your four digit code, mine's 1111 right now. Then you go to users. Now, if you just wanted to update your code, the homeowner's name is Brian. We go here, edit, and you'd update the code. So right now it's 1111. Let's make it 2222. Now you hit save and you back out. Now let's see if that updated. So we're gonna arm it stay and we're gonna try to do 1111 code and that doesn't work any longer. Now we're gonna try to arm it stay, 2222, the new code, and now it's armed. So that took, so we're gonna disarm it. To create a new user, you're going to go to tools, same thing. The new code is 2222, we're gonna users, now you see here add new we're going to add new user so you're going to put in the news user's name so right now we'll just put in an s test save one thing that people forget is they don't hit that partition now i've never done a security system install with numerous partitions so you always just click the one have that highlighted partition one unless you do have multiple partitions and that'll be all sorts of different videos, but it's very rare you would. Um, you just highlight that, you go to authority level. Now user can use the system, but you can't get into tools. Um, guest, I believe is the same as, as user. You can arm and disarm the system. I'm not 100% on that, but I know if you wanted to make another master, so if you're trying to make a new user code for your wife or her husband, um, and they have full access and get into tools and all that. You go to master, we're gonna put in the user code. Let's make this one 3333. And save. So let's see now if that works. So let's see if I can get to tools with using the test and I can. Get back out, let's see if I can arm stay with 3333 and I can. Disarm, and go in here, tools. Now if we wanted to erase that, go in here and just delete it. But that's how you add a new user. So going in here, adding a new, and if we said guest, Save, partition one, user code, let's make this 555, or authority level, let's do user and see. Actually, it says guest, so let's make it guest and see. So now, tools is still the 2222 as the master user. Let's see if we can do, we can't. Let's see if we can arm it stay. So 
the guest user can still arm it and disarm it, but they can't get into tools or do any of functionality. So that's how you change the user and update it. There are gonna be times when you want to bypass a certain sensor, uh, such as if you wanted to change out the battery without it uh, going off and tampering, or if say if you wanted to leave the sliding glass door open uh, and have all the whole system be armed except your sliding door. Um, what you can do is you go into zones and these, you see the sensors here. Say if I wanted to bypass the front door, I would hit the front door and highlight it. I would hit bypass. I'd put in the code, which is 1111 right now for me. And now you can see it's bypassed and it's ready to arm and it's bypassed. And then once you disarm the system, uh, it'll clear that bypass automatically. So, so if we arm stay, one, 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 one. Now it's arm stay bypassed. Now if we hit disarm, one, 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 you'll see it's ready to arm and then the bypass is cleared. So if you want to do it again, you can go into zones and if you wanted to replace and then you'd have to do it again. So for this, you wanted to bypass a sliding door so that way you can come and go and have everything else still armed. You'd hit that, you'd hit bypass, put in the code, and now it's bypassed. So it's ready to arm and bypassed. So all the sensors come have uh, what's called a tamper switch. So I've had a couple calls about this where if they're moving a couch or a mattress and then they hit the, the sensor, so I'm gonna mimic that. So this is a, uh, a door window sensor. And say if this was hit hard or we take it off, it's gonna start beeping. Now, it's not calling the police because the system was not armed, but because someone messed with the sensor, it's tampering. So what you do is you come here, you can hit disarm, you can put any sort of number in. It doesn't have to be a four digit code to to um to stop the beeping but you're gonna have to come back up here put it back on put it back on now it's back on properly so when you go here it's going to say not ready to arm trouble tamper the garage door so what you're going to do is you're going to disarm it Put in your code, which is 111 right now, and now it's ready to arm. So that's what the tamper is in the beeping. Another huge service that you're paying for is whether the system is armed or not, because right now it's saying ready to arm, so that means it's not armed, is you have 24 seven police, fire, and medical panic buttons watching over this home 24 seven. So if there's any type of emergency situation, what you do is you go into this little right hand, you see this little sign, this little police fire and medical sign. If you tap this button, this opens up to a new screen that says police, fire and medical. If you press personal, whoever has the app would be alerted that you press there's a medical emergency and ADT would call you very quickly um, and uh, ask what their emergency is. And if you didn't answer, they would send the EMTs. The same with if there's a fire, if there's a fire, you press fire and you get out and they send the fire department. And the police panic is, you know, if for some reason there was a commotion outside, no one's broken in yet, but you felt unsafe. If you go here and press police, the alarm, um, you'd get a, um, ADT would call very, very quickly and send the police. So this is another huge service that you're paying for, is the whole life safety system for the house. So again, Right on the front screen, right here in the top right hand corner, you press that and it takes a, a, a two step process. So that cuts the, there's no false alarms. You don't press this and then press this by accident. So you press this and you press that and that's immediate. You get a call very quickly. Um, there's no time to put in your code or anything like that. You get a call and they're sending help if you don't answer.